And this is this is a carbon fibre violin that I did as a summer project with the university. Uh, basically, it was a, a halfway point for the for the acoustic carbon fibre violin to to test the test the neck and test the fingerboard uh, and test the peg box, but as well as to create something that would that would create interest in the project as a whole. Well, um, it was given to me by a man from Carbon Concepts called John Dominic, and um, yeah, he he's made a carbon fibre flute before, and was just quite interested in. in Seeing what other instruments can be made from carbon fibre. Um, yeah, people have people have tried this one. It's it's not very loud by itself because I mean it doesn't have it doesn't have the f holes in it that it, uh, uh, this one has. This is um, an aluminium sinters uh, violin made by Eos, uh, just to just to show the form of the violin more than anything else. Uh, I feel yeah tired and a little bit relieved. It's, it's good. I mean, this is what I did last summer, so I haven't really had summer in, in two years now, so it's, it's been pretty intense. This is my major project. Um, I've been working with a local company um, who produce light therapy products. Um, now, light therapy products are to treat seasonal affective disorder, acne rosacea, um, skin rejuvenation, so for spider veins, for wrinkles, also for ageing spots. Um, and the products on the market at the minute, they retail at around £300. And these products will only treat one of those dis skin disorders. So to kind of combat this, to try and make a more consumer-friendly product, I've designed Modulite, the Modular Life Therapy Solution. Um, the solution basically is to design one simple module where different LEDs can slot in to, um, to produce different treatments. The key selling feature about this is that the different modules can either have acne rosacea LEDs in, skin rejuvenation LEDs in, or sad LEDs in. Um, and also beyond this, you can build up your levels of treatment, so having one, two, or three different um, modules plugged in together, and that will also reduce um, treatment times. Because especially for the acne treatments, the patients have to take up to 30 minutes of treatment time. So to try and reduce that time is obviously preferable for the patients. Um, the modules themselves retail, they would retail at 89.99, and the base unit would retail at a similar price. Um, so instantly the consumer has a, um, a product for £180, which does the treatment that all the other products do for £300. The key unique selling point about this product is that I've designed a hook system which allows the um, in the base two small arms will fold out of the base um, as can be seen in the back and then they can be hooked over a headboard or a similar surface so that instead of having to sit in front of a desk and have an achy back for half an hour at a time the, um, the user can hook it over the headboard and they can just lie down for the treatment because especially with a half hour treatment every day it can get quite tiring. It's been massively enjoyable, to be honest. I mean, each of the project, projects I've been more involved in, and like leading up to this last one, it's been incredible amounts of hours trying to fit more than 24 hours into a day to do the work. Um, I'm just looking forward to getting a job and carrying on designing, really. Hi, I'm Derek Chan. Uh, this is my RSA shortlisted project, and which is uh, Stairman's, and this is for RSA uh, Wife of Fitness. And it's basically it is a, it is a stair nozzle which place on the stair, grip the stair a little bit grippy if you run slippery, right? and for more furthermore it tells you how many minutes of stair you have been taking. So every quarter of minutes of stairs you will see one of them, one of the stair men. And so imagine there be like in in underground and in the school and also in your office back back <coughs> office. Back there, uh, you can see a couple of the stairs to encourage people to take more stairs, and also to uh, let people know how many stairs have, have been taken. Yeah, this is this is being exhibited at the Nottingham Design uh, Product Design and Manufacture Exhibition. Um, what you can see here, this is my personal post post glass protection for the RSA Design Group for Public Spaces Safe Places focuses on personal protection and secondary attacks. Um, my research showed me that um, the most devastating types of attacks would happen on either respondees to the first set of attacks or 
when bombs set off would congregate people into a confined space where a secondary attack would go off to cause the maximum amount of devastation possible. So I came up with a personal body armour to protect people in, the, in case of such attacks. It would be retrofitted underneath, say, seating, using a similar convention to emergency aircraft life vests. Um, in that case, people would easily be able to understand how to use the product. Um, so the idea is a bomb goes off in, say, a cinema. In the cinema next to it, you're told to put your jacket on. Once the jacket's put on, if you're evacuating that building, you've got a much better chance of surviving later if the secondary blast goes off. And it's all about raising the percentages, so you don't just have a 10% survival rate, you have a 20, 30, 40% survival rate. Uh, the vest is made from a smart material called D3O. This material is a sheer thickening polymer, so it gets stronger under impact. My major project, I focused on a condition called obstructive sleep apnea. After getting in contact with the University Hospital Sleep Apnea Department, um, basically, sleep apnea is a condition where the back of the throat closes up during sleep, and this causes a total blockage of the throat's airway. Um, basically, this ends up with the person coming out of a deep sleep, waking up several times in the night. Um, this can be very, like, obstructive, very um, disrupted to people's day to day living as they have to tell the DVLA they're very tired during the day and it can lead to conditions such as heart, coronary heart disease and high blood pressure. So basically this is the existing design. The basal mask fits over the face like this, with the head strap going behind the head. This is a nasal mask, it basically it pushes air down into the nose and this um, makes sure that the airway is kept open during sleep. Um, so you have to wear this 20, um, while you're sleeping, 365 days a year. So my project aimed on eliminating the claustrophobia and discomfort caused by such masks. Um, and I came up with the idea of the Nilpurus mouthpiece design. So the design I've come up with is a small mouth-located device. It uses a double ball-joint design. So you're not going to get any any tug from the mask, no matter which way the, the ball gets turned. Um, it sits in the mouth using a, a mouth location device. That stops the, the mask from tipping either way. Sits it straight up inside the mouth, that just sits in front of your front teeth. Then you have a silicon mouthpiece, which sits between the cheeks and the teeth, and this creates the, the air seal. Um, Obviously, for different anthropometric sized users, you've got different sized nasal prongs, but different sized silicon mouthpieces. And the idea is to make it a much friendlier, more sympathetic, and more desirable product for sleep apnea sufferers. It's definitely four years, the four years have paid off. It's been a really good reaction to the exhibition. Um, I think a reasonable number of people turning out, everybody's been really impressed with what they've seen. Um, they think the students work professional and of good quality and they love the ideas they've been coming up with. Well, I mean, they've put an awful lot of work in consistently over the four years to achieve the standards they have done. It's been a fair bit for me too, but we've managed that. Um, but they've, they've, come up with the, they've come up with the goods at the end. I think they can really stand with their heads tall knowing they've done uh, some fantastic work. So some, some of the students in here, we've got students in here who've, who've uh, won awards over the last two years. We've won, in the Royal Society of Arts um, Awards, we've won um, six awards in the last two years and been shortlisted for 15. And I don't think any other university can probably match quite that in the last two years anyway. So it's a testament to the students' hard work.